In this video, we shall explore the support that BlueJ provides for automated testing. In particular, the JUnit unit testing framework has been integrated into BlueJ. JUnit supports regression testing, the rerunning of tests each time a change is made to a program. Automated testing is really essential if testing is to be taken seriously as a normal part of the development process. In this video, we shall introduce JUnit testing into the online shop project. We start by recognizing that thorough testing is both tedious and time consuming if we have to do it interactively. Nevertheless, it is essential if we wish to detect errors as early as possible during development. What we need therefore is something that will automate the process of object creation, method calling and checking of method results if we are to take the challenge of repeated testing seriously. This requirement is exactly what the JUnit framework supports. By default, the JUnit tools are not enabled within BlueJ so they must be turned on. Select BlueJ, Preferences, Miscellaneous, and then tick Show Unit Testing Tools. A new set of buttons appears in the left hand panel. If we now right click over a class in the class diagram, a new menu item is available Create Test Class. Selecting this creates an additional class, coloured green and linked to the sales item class. The sales item test icon also displays unit test. Looking inside we can see that this is an ordinary Java class although it does have a few additional features that we won't go into here. One of the principles of the testing approach we shall perform is to define a separate method for each test. For instance, when we create a sales item object, we shall want to test that the price is stored correctly. That test will require its own method. We shall also want to check that the object has recorded the item name correctly. That test will require its own method. As we add comments, each operation such as upvoting and downvoting will require their own test methods, and so on. The idea will be that the sales item test class will eventually acquire a very large number of methods. Each will be designed to test one specific aspect of the class's behaviour. Some of the methods will contain positive tests, while others will contain negative tests. One of the nice features of the integration of BlueJ with JUnit is that we don't have to physically write code for each of these methods. Rather, we can generate the code automatically from our normal interactions on the object bench. So let's see how to create a basic method. We shall create a method to test that the price is set correctly when a new sales item is created. We start by right clicking over the test class and selecting Create Test Method. We have to decide on a name for the method, so let's call it Test Initial Price. Notice that in the left hand panel a red circle has appeared. This is to tell us that our actions from now on will be recorded as the basis for the code in the test method. This will continue until we select either End or Cancel. We create a sales item. And now we want to check that the price has been set properly. Rather than bringing up an inspector, we call the getPrice method on it. We now see a modified version of the method result window. There's an extra area that's asking us to assert what the result should be. Since the result should be 10,000, the value we pass to the constructor, that's the value we type here. And then close. That's the end of what we wish to test in this test method, so we select End. The red recording indicator has now gone grey to indicate that we're no longer recording. If we now look inside the test class, we see the code for the test initial price method that's been created from our actions. The call to assert equals was generated from the assertion added via the method result window. If you're wondering where the assert equals method is, it's been made available via the import statements at the beginning of the class, but we won't go into further details here. Now that the method is in the test class, how do we run it? We don't actually create an instance of the test class, notice that there's no constructor if we right click over it. Instead we call the test method directly from the menu. The status line at the bottom of the BlueJ window indicates that the test was successful. What this means is that the value returned from getPrice matched the value that we asserted it should be. 
We can now add a second test to check that the name of the item is being set correctly. Let's call it test name. This time, instead of running the methods individually, we'll select Test All from the Test Classes menu. We see a new window containing a list of both test methods with a tick against each. If either method had failed, there would have been a red cross instead of the green tick. While the process of setting up the tests takes some effort, the major gain we have is that the cost of rerunning them is trivial. This is very important. It means that we're much more likely to test frequently during development than if we had to keep recreating the tests by hand each time. However, there's one further way in which we can speed up the process of creating the tests. Notice that we created an object with the same initial state for both of the tests we've created so far. We shall often need to create a set of objects that we want to run multiple tests on. This is called a fixture. Rather than setting them up by hand for each test to be recorded, we can set up multiple objects on the object bench and then have code created in the test class that will automatically reproduce the state of the object bench. Let's illustrate that. First, we shall clear out the code we've already created and start again. We recompile the test class. Now we simply create objects in the usual way. Once we have the objects we want to work with for multiple tests, we select Object Bench to Test Fixture. The object bench is cleared, and when we look in the test class, we see code in the setup method to recreate what we had, and a field for each object. Now let's recreate our previous test initial price method. As soon as we do so, the objects appear on the object bench ready for us, so finishing the test off is easy. In summary, we've illustrated some of the ways in which the JUnit test framework has been integrated into BlueJ. JUnit allows us to record tests interactively and run those tests repeatedly. This test automation feature makes it much more likely that we will run regression tests whenever we make modifications to our program because the testing process is cheap. It also ensures that we don't just test the most recent additions. This is an important point because changes to one part of a program often have unexpected and undesired effects on other parts that we were not aware of. You can find out more on JUnit within BlueJ in the chapter and one of the appendices.